Ubisoft Assassin's Creed Shadows, causing quite the stir currently. And why is that? Well, because it is one in a long, long list of games or indeed any pieces of media which seeks to demoralise and misrepresent facts and history. Now, why is this particular item causing such a stir? Well, set in feudal Japan, and of course, feudal Japan, you think warlords, samurais, ninjas. And yet we have Yasuke Yatsuke, a legendary African black samurai as one of our main characters. So representation matters, ladies and gentlemen, but only when it's uh, black people. Because Japanese people don't count. Unless, of course, you're a woman, because there is a female in this game as well. And essentially, this is a play on a current rise in media portraying Yasuke as this legendary beast of a samurai that was highly regarded and did all of these things, when in actuality, the history surrounding this individual is very minuscule. What is shown in textbooks is tiny. And the cultural impact of Yasuke on Japan is essentially non-existent. So I thought today I would discuss some of Yasuke's appearances in textbooks and show exactly why this is causing such a stir and why, if you are indeed African-American, you should feel pandered to and somewhat, I guess, offended. Because make no mistake, this game is designed to solely pander to African-Americans. It's certainly not there to pander to Japanese people because they outrightly and rightly reject this woke nonsense. And that's what this is. This is historical revisionism. So dive in with me as we take a look at the known textbook appearances of Yusuke. So from what is known, ladies and gentlemen, Yusuke Yatsuke was born in approximately 1555 and was most likely from Mozambique, although that is unconfirmed because, again, we essentially know nothing about this individual. Even what is referenced is very, very minor. So from what we do know is that actually Yusuke was a victim of the Arab slave trade. Yes, funnily enough, that was a thing. That did happen, although we don't hear much about it. And was most likely sold to the Portuguese in Mozambique. He was then probably transported from Africa to the Far East as human cargo. Again, we just don't know. Records are very, very murky, but at some point he became a bodyguard of Alessandro Vlnano, who was an Italian Jesuit who was given the title Visitor of Missions in the Indies by Pope Gregory the Thirteenth in 1573. Now, Alessandro arrived in Japan around 1579, starting in the southern islands of Kyushu and finally making their way to the capital in the spring of 1581. Again, this is what can be pieced together. Now, around April 1581, Oda Nobunaga granted Venano an audience with him and brought Yasuke with him. It's not clear on how, when or why, but not long after their visit with Nobunaga, Yasuke was placed under Nobunaga's care. Likely, his servant. He was given to him. He was sold to him. Now, interestingly, during the initial meeting, Nobunaga ordered that Yasuke remove all of his clothes and be scrubbed down because he didn't quite believe he was that black. So he was scrubbed down. He was fascinated with the fact that this individual was as dark as he was. And uh, Oda Nobunaga even had all of his family come around and watch this ordeal this meeting, this exchange. It is said that at some point, Yasuke was granted the title of samurai. But again, that's kind of up for debate. Now, in terms of the accounts of Yasuke, there is basically none. The English sources on this era are incredibly limited, and even those which have been translated don't really give that wide an account of his situation in Japan. There is a book called The Chronicle of Lord Nobunaga by Ota Gyuchi, which was released in 2011. And this book is essentially groundbreaking for anyone wanting to study Oda Nobunaga. Uh, it's a translated version of the Shincho Koki written by Ota Gyuchi, which is a primary source uh, that was 16 volumes long and covered everything from 1568 to Nobunaga's death in 1582. 
So in this book and in regards to Yusuke, all that is written and all that can be found is the following. On the 23rd of the second month, a black Amor came from the Kirishtian country. He appeared to be 26 or 27 years old, black all over, his whole body, just like an ox. This man looked robust and had good demeanor. What is more, his formidable strength surpassed that of 10 men. The Baturin brought him along by the way of paying his respects to Nobunaga. Indeed, it was owing to Nobunaga's power and his glory that yet unheard of treasures from the three countries and curiosities of this kind came to be seen here time and time again, a blessing indeed. In the book They Came to Japan, an anthology of European reports on Japan, 1543 to 1640, which was released in 1995, it is stated the following. Written on April 14th, 1581, relates how the inquisitive populace of Miyako, Kyoto, broke down the door of the Jesuit resistance in their eagerness to inspect a Negro slave, and several were injured in the ensuring brawl. So great was their desire to see him that it was alleged that he could have earned at least 10,000 cruzados in a very short time if put on exhibition. All this aroused the curiosity of Nobunaga, who summoned the man into his presence. He was so intrigued by the dusky fellow that he made him strip to the waist to satisfy himself that his colour was genuine. The ruler, thereupon, called his children to witness this extraordinary spectacle, and one of his nephews gave the man a sum of money. And in Sengoku, Jedi, Nobunaga, Hideyoshi and Leyasu, Three Unifiers of Japan by Danny Chaplin, released in 2018, there is stated the following. Another member of Nobunaga's entourage, whom we have not yet spoken of up until now, was Nobunaga's remarkable 6-2 coloured page, attired somewhat incongruously in full samurai armour, whose name was Yasuke. Now, that's important to note, he was stated to be a page, not samurai. Entranced by the first Negro whom he had ever seen, Nobunaga instantly took the man to his service. He even made him a samurai and gave him a Japanese name, Yasuke. This is the same textbook. Page, samurai. Samurai was often a word used for servant. So, page, samurai, could they be used interchangeably? Yes. Now, later in the chapter, he is referred to once more. Fighting alongside Nobutada was Nobunaga's coloured page, Yasuke. The Negro Samurai fought like a lion, but when his Japanese comrades were overrun, he surrendered his sword to Akechi's men. They approached Akechi, asking what to do with him, to which the rebel general replied that the man was, and quote, a beast who was undeserving of the rank of samurai, but that he ought therefore not to be killed. In all likelihood, Akechi may have pitied the man's predicament and sought to spare the coloured man's life by insulting him in this way. Yasuke was sent to Kyoto's Nabanji or Southern Barbarian Temple, where he was returned to the custody of the Jesuits, who had first brought him to Japan. So it does appear that actually Samurai and Page are being used interchangeably here in reference to Yusuke. So ladies and gentlemen, was Yusuke a samurai? No, probably not. Did he have a cultural impact on Japan? No, not at all, in fact. The individual that did have the greatest impact on feudal Japan was actually William Adams, the first Englishman to appear in Japan, uh, known as the pilot, also uh, portrayed as Blackthorn in the fantastic show Shogun. Now, that individual has a gravesite, statues, multiple references, oh, and even a train station. So make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, Ubisoft deserves all the hate they're getting. They are merely virtue signaling. And yes, they do hate you.